Hello, this is Sharon Green from the Academic Success Center at Niagara University. Welcome to this short video with tips on taking class notes. Students often refer to what they do in class as taking notes. I'd like to suggest that we refer to this vital college skill as making notes. Why? Well, it's impossible to write down everything that a professor says. So what can you do? The challenge is to listen carefully to what your professor says and then capture it in your own words, more briefly, without missing key points or altering facts. This is a much more active process of making notes, not a passive process of merely taking notes. I'm going to offer you 12 suggestions to help you make more effective notes. So get a pen and paper and jot down at least two suggestions or perhaps more that would help you in the courses you're taking this semester. Here we go. First suggestion, complete all assigned reading before class. If you're familiar with the material, you're likely to make better notes. You'll be able to distinguish main ideas from details, which will give you better organized notes. You might also remember how to spell names and terms. Second suggestion, use Cornell note paper. On this paper, you're going to leave a two inch margin on each page. During class, you'll take your notes in the larger section, but you might occasionally be able to add some details in the two inch margin or put a star or an arrow next to points that seem important. But after class is when you really use this two inch margin space. You may add more details or clarify those details you wrote in class. Again, marking important points. And in particular, compare your class notes with your textbook so that you can add more details and more examples. On Cornell paper, you also leave a few blank lines at the bottom of each page. Again, don't try to do anything in that space during class. However, after class, see if you can write a one or two sentence summary of what's on each page of your notes. This is a very effective way to consolidate and think about and even start studying your notes. Suggestion number three, if you use a spiral notebook, leave the opposing pages blank. That gives you even more room than in the two inch margin to do some of the steps that we just described. Also, if you have a professor who may skip around, if she returns to something she mentioned, say a half hour earlier, you can go back to that page and write it in the blank opposing page next to the material that it connects to. Suggestion number four. If your professor uses PowerPoint slides, listen very carefully and don't just copy what's on the slides. Think about those slides not as your full set of notes, but rather as your professor's outline. It's vital to add details and examples. Sometimes the examples or the details might seem familiar to you or very obvious or common sense and you might be less inclined to write them down, but you should write them down nonetheless. Think of this phrase, more is better than less. In other words, it's better to have more notes, even points or details that seem obvious because otherwise you won't have them to study from later. Number five, organize your notes. Indent and indent quite a bit so that subpoints will will be clear and obvious when you study your notes label examples and skip plenty of lines 
instead of just skipping one line between points, maybe skip two or three lines. Don't be afraid to use lots of paper. We can recycle it later. Number six, abbreviate. And you probably already abbreviate commonly used words like BEC for because, or EX for example, or W for with. But you can also recognize, or I'm sorry, you can also abbreviate words you will recognize later. For example, INDIV for individual. Very few other words start with those letters. Or EST for establish or IMP for important, or RESP for responsible or responsibility. Number seven, write the beginnings of longer words and then leave a little blank space. This enables you to keep up with the professor and get the entire point, not just the beginning of a point. This is a set of notes I took in a lecture about nuclear proliferation. And you'll see that I wrote that at the top of the page. Then the professor said, I'm going to tell you about two types of nuclear proliferation, and the first is horizontal. Well, I recognized immediately that if I wrote out nuclear proliferation in full, I would miss the rest of the detail. So I wrote N and left a space, as you'll see, and then PRO and left a space. That enabled me to get the two types written down. Now the trick here is as soon as your professor pauses for any reason, either answering a question or erasing the dry erase board, as soon as you can write in the rest of the word. In other words, nuclear after the N and proliferation after the PRO. You'll notice a little further down, I did the same thing with NW. The professor was talking about nuclear weapons. But again, I knew that if I wrote out those words, I would miss the rest of the definition. So I just put N with a space and W with a space. But as soon as I had a moment's break, I filled in nuclear weapons because I was afraid that a few weeks later when I came back to study, I might not remember what the W stood for. So this is a little challenging, but if you make it a habit, it's actually quite easy to do. Suggestion number eight, include words that show relationships. The particularly important relationship words are the word but, which shows contrast, or it's more sophisticated version like however, and the word so, or therefore, which show cause and effect. These are especially important because test questions on college tests often involve relationships. So you want to make those relationships clear in your notes. It can be helpful to write words like but and so in capital letters and maybe even circle them. Number nine, read over your notes very soon after class, if possible within an hour. Studies show that within the first hour after hearing something, we remember quite a bit of it, maybe as much as 60 to 70%. However, after that first hour, our recall declines considerably. Give yourself at least 10 minutes to read over your notes as soon as possible after each class, filling in as many details as you can recall. Suggestion number 10, compare your notes with a study partner. This can be a very effective way of getting a more complete set of notes because what you missed, your study partner might have gotten and vice versa. In addition, discussing the material while you compare notes can help you remember it better. Make this part of your weekly routine. Suggestion number 11, after class, write possible test questions. So remember this two inch margin space. You probably don't have too much in it during class. So after class, you can write two or three or four questions per page, imagining the kind of questions your professor might ask. 
This not only helps you think about your notes more deeply, it also sets you up to study because now you can take a sheet of paper, cover up the notes from class, look at your question, see if you can answer it, and then slide down the paper to uncover the information and see if you answered the question accurately. This is a, an excellent way to study. And our final suggestion, after class, highlight your notes. Treat your notes just like you do with a textbook. Highlight minimally, you never want to overdo it, but highlight the key words and maybe a few of the key points. When you return to study those notes, your eye will be instantly drawn to what you highlighted. Did you find at least two or perhaps more useful suggestions today? I hope so. And if so, try them this week. If you'd like more assistance with making better notes, study skills specialists in our office, the Academic Success Center, are always willing to help. Our phone number and our location are on the screen. And finally, if you click on the link at the bottom of this slide, it will take you to many other useful resources about making more complete and more accurate sets of notes. I wish you well in all your classes. Thank you for listening.